Hey folks, this is Sol back with some more Dragonflight coverage. Today we're covering engineering and tailoring. In each profession, I'm going to cover some of the notable stuff that can make in Dragonflight, plus do an overview of the specialization trees so you have half of an idea of what's going on. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more coverage. Let's start with engineering, which I've got to say has got a lot to deliver when it comes to fun. As for profitability, uh, jury's still out, but let's take a look at what they can do and make. The active engineer is going to constantly be throwing bombs and using their tinkers while collecting scrap, which can then be sort of mass milled into goodies. What you get depends on what you specialize in, but it's just cool that you're encouraged to keep using your devices for materials and to just see what happens. As usual, engineers will make a bunch of parts in order to make stuff. Like all the other professions, quality materials make quality parts, and quality parts make quality whatever it is that you're making. They make a few finishing reagents like most of the other professions, and it'll be up to buyers to pick up what is most useful for them. These just happen to be the engineer's offerings. They can create engineer-specific embellishments, which are meant to provide some utility in combat. In this case, they can do a bit of healing or enhance your tinkers, which I'm going to get to right now. Engineers can make punch cards that can be slotted into crafted goggles or bracers. Spoiler alert, engineers can now craft bracers too. As a side note, on the alpha, the bracers are not restricted to engineers, but the goggles are. Like other professions, these can be crafted at up to mythic quality, but as usual, engineers have their own way of doing things. The reagents used to upgrade item level are the same as other professions, but since this gear uses punch cards, you also sacrifice one of your secondary stats. You can still decide which stat you want to have at least, but note that these stats that you see here are pretty high, and that's probably a bug. Expect that number to be cut roughly in half so the stat budget makes more sense. Anyway, these punch cards are similar to what we've seen in the past with belt and cloak enhancements. Only instead of enchants that you apply to gear, these are specific things that you slot. There's some pretty cool stuff like a stealth turret, a flamethrower, there's a 60 yard ranged intercept sort of ability, there's a magnet that only seems to work on other players with this trait, there's invisibility, and another ability that makes sure that your next tinker ability actually works, because with both a helmet and bracers, you can use up to two punch cards at once. Engineers as usual can make guns as well, and this crafting method is a bit more traditional, using the same reagents as all the other crafters. They can make scopes as well, but now also temporary ammo for some added effect. And even though stat potions are the go-to thing in Dragonflight most likely, they're a lot more serious about bombs being a thing. They still offer some good utility and can do decent damage in a pinch, but my favorite is the I win button, which can only be used outdoors once a day, but it calls in an airstrike for big, big damage. Finally, we have some of the fun stuff. With these two items here, you can control the weather and the skybox. You want a clear sky? Sure, why not? But how about a hellscape with ash raining down, or maybe bringing the twisting nether to Orgrimmar? These things are really, really cool for roleplay purposes and silliness, although only people in your raid or party can see the effect. You have to be standing within 30 or so yards of these devices, but it lasts for two hours. The wormhole is back, surprise, surprise, and so are jumper cables. They can create portable alchemy and engineering tables so these professions can work on major crafts. Finally, there's a tool that is not in test yet, but it's called Savior. It's supposed to be a robot that you deploy before group combat, and if you wipe, it'll eventually res the whole party. Maybe. Let's look at how the specialization trees work. There are four, and the first one's a freebie, Optimized Efficiency. Remember how engineers need to make lots of parts in order to make things? Investing into this tree makes you be more efficient at it, and you'll need to be if you want to make the highest level equipment, the most potent bombs and reagents and so on. Going into explosives helps you learn how to mass produce bombs and grenades. Function over form is the tree to spec into if you want to make gear. Goggles, bracers, and guns are all covered in one branch. The other two help you create better cogwheels and weapon mods. Finally, Mechanical Mind gives you mastery over your tinkers and toys, helping to make them more effective, or at least to not blow up in your face. Now let's move on to tailoring. One of the first things you'll notice is that like other professions, tailors now have to grind down items into smaller components. Unfortunately, this ability is still quite broken in the alpha, which makes testing this profession a little bit slow. Something to note, Wilder Cloth comes in several varieties, from tattered to decayed to singed to frostbitten on top of eh, plain old cloth. 
From there you create bolts and then you can go about making your items. From looking at all the professions so far, yeah it sounds cumbersome to add in extra steps. The way I see it though, it's part of this whole revamp of specializing. A tailor may end up to be really successful just by collecting and processing high quality materials that other tailors are fighting for because, well, they're racing to make the world first mythic helmet. There's a huge opportunity to make big profits out of that without the stress. Anyway, as a tailor, they can make up to mythic item level gear. They can make PvP gear as well, although that doesn't seem to be fully complete yet. Like other professions, they can also create special pieces that trade some customization for built in special procs. Some pieces even create a mini set bonus too. Spellthread is making a return. They should be familiar for many, these are leg enchants for int classes, and there's a specific enchant depending on your role, whether you're a healer or DPS, which should be appropriately infuriating for hybrids. And of course they can make bags. There's a 32 and a 34 slot bag available, and there's also two reagent bags that offer 36 slots and 36 slots. It's obviously a bug, but we know reagent bags will come in sizes of 36, although out of these, which one happens to be the bug? I hope it's the rare bag that's bug because, well, it's going to mean that it'll have even more slots in them, most likely. And they have an assortment of fun stuff too, including pillows and a tent of time travel that only moves forward, slowly. Thanks. Like engineering, tailoring has four specializations with one free at the start, and it's a good one. Tailoring Mastery lets you earn more cloth for mob drops. You can also put points into being more efficient with your crafts, whether it's saving on resources or a chance to make better items. Textiles focuses on the process, letting you improve your efficiency at milling and making materials and turning them into bolts. You can also spec into bag making here. Draconic Network is where the specialized epic gear comes from, but the spec also reveals some extra elements into this crafting. It seems that a crafter can only make so much of a certain cloth in a given period. Specking into Azure Weave or Chrono Weave tailoring will make you better at one than the other, so you'll want to check out what gear is best for you or is the most popular to sell. Finally, Garment Crafting is for the more general tailor who wants full control over their stats and effects. Like the other crafting professions, focusing on a specific slot in this tree while investing into Draconic Needlework can let you double dip on bonuses to help you make a really cool piece of Azure Weave or Chrono Weave gear sooner than later. Otherwise, the tree is pretty straightforward. Choose the slot that you want to invest into and start skilling up. And that's the run through, and I hope I didn't miss anything. What did you think of engineering and tailoring in Dragonflight? Anything fun stand out? Anything you wish that they'd bring back? Because I definitely miss having wrist rocket in chance. Share your thoughts and reactions in a comment below. Like the video, subscribe for more stuff, and I will see you soon for more. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.